All right, new territory, new territory. Speak, wait, speak with Lise? Oh no, out here. Oh, so this was just the icon kind of to be like, hey, talk to this bridge person to cross the bridge. Okay, yeah. Oh, a sightseeing location up there. I'll have to remember that. Oh, hey! It's the Scion B Squad, the ones that have helped. Okay, so yeah, so he was definitely speaking of the, his dead Scion comrades, because these are the ones that were there. So, Vimatia. Since when did you become a bloodhound? Makote ought to trust their ears, not their nose. Oh, Jim Jimboldva. <laughs> On your guard, Armvald. They're still about. <laughs> I can smell them, the Imperials. I can smell them from mom's away. Did you say you were for the Peering Stones? In that case, mayhap Marshal Terrapin and I should join you. We spied a suspicious pair earlier, a uh, Hurer and a Lullafall by the looks of them, but they fled uh, when they realized they'd been spotted. If they're Imperials, then we can't have them stirring up trouble. A Hurer and a Lullafell. Okay. Sleeping Curl, hello. This was simply called the Ladna Bridge before the Garleans arrived. They saw fit to transform it into a base for their supply trains. What's more, atop this tower, they could survey the area for our moms around. Their ambition knows no bounds, nor does their villainy. Alright, Pippin. <laughs> Look a little fr from height descending order of the different uh, grand companies the serpents, the flames, and the uh, maelstrom. We'll soon start sending scouts east to survey the land in preparation, preparation for our advance. We do not anticipate much resistance at this time, but, we should be, but should we encounter any Imperial forces, we shall deal with them quickly and severely. All right, good job, Pippin. Keep the bridge forces strong. Aha! An Aetherite. <laughs> I think that's where we're going. Oh, look at this. Gazelle, quote-unquote. And the thing's face. Cool beastie, certainly no, like, no gazelle I've ever seen. Fantasy gazelle. Hmm, as such as a fate. Once again, worries them, tribe, hunt the scourge of the skies, the feathered fiend, white death. Okay, good job. Worries is the, I'm not participating in any fate. Okay, here they are. All right, Delphino. But of course, tiring though it may be to come and go from the clifftop, it is easily defended and affords an excellent view of the surrounding areas. Yes, yeah, so they're up there. <laughs> This area is home to dangerous beasts, not that we can cannot handle mind, but do not be surprised if something ravenous and slavering comes charging at you out of nowhere. The path to the village is through the tunnel just east of here. Follow me. Oh, you've been here before, Lise? All right, here we go. Glad they had a little stop point here to be like, yeah, go this way, or else I'd be like just circling this area and be like, where's the entrance? Oh, here we go. Where's Lise? Did she go on forward, Alice? We may not have seen any Imperial forces thus far, but we mustn't forget that this was occupied territory until very recently. They could still be nearby. Is the M, M tribe not harassed by, uh... Like, they, there is an either right up there, but they're just not harassed by... They've been keeping hidden, or what? By They're not harassed by the Imperial forces? Not just Seekers of the Sun, but Ananta. Mayhap there is a settlement nearby? So not just Seeker of the Sun Makote, but also Ananta? Where? I don't see any Ananta. Hello, we are friends of Monago. Welcome to the Pier and Stones, home of the M Tribe. I must give you a fair warning that while travelers are welcome here, any acts of hostil hostility will be met with an arrow shot between your eyes. No exception. All right. And we'll do no, no hostilities here. Holy fuck, that leads down to an abyss, man. Ah, 
All right, here we go. So then a little bit of a plateau here. All right, as a tune, eat the right, eat the right. All right, since I don't think it's unlikely we'll see any more combat, we'll switch over to Scholar so we can get a little bit of experience on uh, Scholar Summoner. Okay, good. I did remember to save when I equipped the ring. Save the set. Okay. I'll go off that. Tribe Mender. Okay. Mazalico. Look at the swanky little, like, flare here. You're the adventure that's everybody's talking about, aren't you? The one working with the Allied Forces. If there's anything you need, don't hesitate to ask. Oh, the lore person. Tell me about yourself. You can call me Mazalico. If I'm not mistaken, you've already met my older sister, Nago. Oh, younger sister. Oh, yeah, we're friends with Nago. Nago. Our father, Mraz Nan. Nan? Nan? H? He's the leader of the... I don't know if the H is pronounced. He's the leader of the M tribe. He's likely one of the few males you'll ever see among us. Okay. As per the lore of the, uh, the Sunkeeper Makote, for the most part, there's, like, a bunch of wandering Sunkeeper Makote. Um, but there's usually, like, the one, the Noon, the age, leading the clan. Um, and then the, he's, like, the strongest, and then other males can challenge him, but most of the other males just go out and travel, for the most part. And then they can come back and seek to, uh, challenge the clan leader for his part as the strongest. And then, yeah, otherwise it's just the, the ladies hanging out here. Usually. That's the Sunkeeper lore. They stay only to challenge him in a bid to claim his title of Nun. Yeah, there we go. Those who fail remain as Tia, which is the, uh, the, the, the title of, that the males are usually given. So, like, uh, like for the Crystal Tower, like Graha Tia. Or leave and attempt to create tribes of their own. Under normal circumstances, there can only be one Nun in our tribe, you see. Though there was a time when our lands were vast, and two Nuns led our people. I see. So there was like two separate clans of like, so there's two groupings. Okay. What kind of place is this? Thanks to you and yours driving the Garleans of Castle and Vladina, we can finally start getting things back to the way they were. In the darker days of the occupation, it was Maraz Nun who inspired us who gave us the strength to live. We owe him our lives, and we gladly give them to defend him and our home. I doubt there has ever been a Nun more before him so loved by his people. I see a very inspiring leader, apparently, here. Talk to everybody else. Oh, look at this. They slayed a gazelle, quote-unquote. Make a fine rug, that one. Mzimzizi. <laughs> Mzimzizi. Like the hairstyle ass. The three of us have hunted together for as long as I can remember. When tracking our prey, it's as if we're all in one mind. Mazamco, hello. We're all equal in the eyes of Maraz Noon. His fair mindedness is part of what makes him so well loved among our people. Alright, do Chocobo keep all the way out here? All right, Miss Septa. The presence of Imperial forced us to abandon much of our hunting grounds, but our resources diminished as they are. Uh, with our resources diminished as they are, relations with the Ananta have proven invaluable to our survival. I see relationships with the Ananta. Merchant. Then Maha Mahatawa. Hello. Though it fills my heart with pride to know that my daughter is fighting for this noble cause. A part of me wants nothing more than for her to come home. Was oh, Monago your daughter? That said, I know better than to try and stop her. So I wait and hope, and I pray. All right. She's old. Give her glasses so that we can understand she's old. All right, and then apparently a very inspiring leader, Marhaz Noon. Hello. The fires of war spread across Girabanya, and soon we ourselves may be forced to enter the fray. Should it come to pass, 
and it will fall to me to guide my people through the flames. For I have the rare and unfortunate honor to serve not only as Noon, but as leader of my people. Oh, is the Noon not always typically the leader? Okay. Please. Well, what do you think? Hard to tell from down below that a whole village is up here, isn't it? Oh, I saw the Aetherite, and I knew. I saw the Aetherite. Now I go? Ah, you've come. Ooh, Welcome, voice. friends, to my village. My home. Yeah, we just want to make sure if there was people attacking, you know, we would, uh, help you out here. How fair your people? Hmm, how fair them? Good, all things considered. Better than the Ananta, at any rate. They've sent an emissary. I'll take you to her. Oh, something happening with the Ananta? They did say something about, like, the snakes Fordola did. I didn't realize I have like a little bit of fluff at the end We're of the We're here to help. Will you tell us what happened? Yeah, what's up with your people? Aye. It began with a quarrel between the Imperials and the Kaliana. Okay. The Kaliana? Bean? The Kaliana are another Ananta tribe. The strongest and the most influential. Okay, they're an Ananta tribe. Okay. Unlike the Vera, they want no part of our troubles. They swore fealty to the Empire and were content to remain within their borders. Okay, so the Vera tribe have decided to help us, but the other ones, the Calianta, were just sort of like... Okay, they swore fealty to the Empire and were content to remain within their borders, I see. Just so. The Kaliana forsook their pride and the fight and yielded to Garlemald long ago. But then a new commander was sent to hold the Black Bridge. She demanded the Kaliana surrender a hostage, this butcher. Surrender a hostage? Why? Poor Dola. It doesn't make sense, though. The Vera are the ones working with the Resistance. Why would she threaten the Kaliana? Maybe because she doesn't see the difference between them. Because she is ignorant, like all Imperials, she knows not the difference between Kaliana and Vera, nor does she care to learn. Shake's head. I see. All Fadola knew for sure was that the Resistance would come from the West. She reasoned, therefore, that if the Ananta on the East Bank turned their coats, she would be trapped. I take it the Kaliana had no choice but to oblige her. I see, so they didn't realize that the Kaliana had nothing to do with the fight, and she thought, well, if they decide that they do want to have something to do with the fight, she's going to take a hostage as... uh... insurance. No, they did not. The Imperials left with the Kaliana Broodmother's own daughter, Anamika. Broodmother? Is that who they're led by? Long days and nights, she looked out on the Black Bridge, weeping for her child. Until you came. How did they know this? The Broodmother knew at once which way the winds would blow. She and her warriors met with the fleeing Imperials in the road and demanded that her daughter be returned. So you've just incited their violence. They wouldn't have done any of this shit. Bad idea. Fordola's not the kind to take threats lying down. Yeah. You know her well. The Butcher turned her blade to Anamika and bade the Kaliana move aside. <sighs> but the Brood Mother would not yield. I know where this is going. Do we?
The Kaliana surrounded the Imperials, one of whom, whether out of fear or stupidity, cut the child down. There was naught that could be done. Out of fear or stupidity. Stupidity is right, because now they have a whole another uh, an tribe that would have not been against them. Now against them. What madness. What madness. The true madness was yet to come. For in her despair, the Kaliana broodmother cried out for her daughter to be restored to life. She beseeched Sri Lakshmi's intercession. Oops. She summoned a primal then and there? Okay. She summoned a primal? <laughs> okay. Shri, Shri, Alphano immediately heard that and it was just like, intercession? That sounds godlike. She likes me could have just been like, uh, not a primal or godlike entity, but sure, okay. That she the did, primal? Jesus. if only for an instant. Bereft of courage and I mean, honor, the broodmother mother sought solace in her faith. The Imperials fled in terror at the sight of the Goddess, abandoning these lands to the Ananta. Now the Kaliana bid us make pilgrimage to pay proper respects. Yet though we Vera revere Sri Lakshmi as the holiest of the holy, we will not prostrate ourselves before her. Fair enough. I also don't want to be tempered, and also this is not actually technically your god. And so you turn to us. I, all who have fought god. with the resistance, have heard tell of the warrior, the icon slayer. That's me. And here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, oh, well, oh, I'm just looking around like, hmm. I believe oh, we oh, have yeah, had then, enough. Mm -hmm, me. Inconvenient though the timing may be, if a primal has indeed been summoned, oh, what are you guys we can looking scarce at? afford to ignore it. We must needs discuss how best to resolve this situation. Yeah, do we, where, how do we get in? Guns blazing? Like, uh, specific sanctum where the lady hangs out? And we shall take the paladin armor. As an aid the card quest right there. Okay, hold on, Minago. I still can't believe that a primal's been summoned so close to the village. The idea that our people are. Um, Lost her accent. Still can't believe that a primal's been summoned so close to the village. The idea that our people could be taken to serve us thralls is. Oh, it just doesn't bear thinking about. Please? This is all for Dola's fault. Ah, oh, yep, yes it is. Alice, eh? And now that we have a primal to contend with as well, as if the Empire needed an excuse to start rounding up beastmen again. Again? Have done that before? You have slain many icons before, yes. Then please put an end to this madness. We'll do, we'll do, but first... Oh, there's also another side quest out there. First side quest! Mimzimzizi. Mimzizi is fretting over the tribe's lack of food. Hmm. Oh, oh, sorry, I was distracted by the grumbling of my stomach. Thanks to the Garleans, we've been having trouble maintaining our food stores. Custom dictates that any game brought back to the village must be distributed evenly amongst everyone, but there hasn't been much to go around lately. Without fear of harassment from the Garleans, we can finally begin hunting again, but there's still so much to, to do if we're going to replenish our supplies. Any chance you'd be willing to help? Of course. If you can bring back, say, three Teleosterises... Okay, sure, whatever that is. It'll be a great help. You'll find them to the north of here, but don't kill them. We'll need their meat to be as fresh as possible when it's put away. Oh, we're gonna capture them. 
When you warm them down enough, you can stuff them into these bags without much of a fight. Now, I know what you're thinking, but trust me, they'll fit. Of course they will. Stay safe out there. Trust me, they'll, they'll fit. These bags, magical. The Telesoriases are not, aren't, aren't too far north of here. No need to push yourself too hard, though. We only need three. Okay. Let's switch to uh, Summoner for this. Boom shakalaka, get the uh, carbuncle out here. Um, alright, yeah, there's a side quest. Down, down the mountain. Oh no, there's a second part to this. Oh! Didn't realize, watery area with some waters here? Oh, that's nice. I wonder if this is probably why they, where they set up camp. Megizo. These two will make fine hunters someday. But first, they'll need to improve their marksmanship. Alright. Uh, Belinbo. Melinbo finds herself between a rock and a hard place. Well, I'll be. You're the adventurer from Castor Telembolotna, aren't you? You put on quite a show down there. I'm sure you hear this all the time, but we could really use a woman of your talents right about now. I do hear this all the time, but I'm willing to help. Daras have been cropping out to the south of here, and they've been giving us a, no small amount of trouble. We do what we can to help keep them at bay, but every once in a while we'll come across a mountainous mess of gold-dusted rock that sends us running with tails between our legs. Imagine, m imagine handling a few daras would be like swatting flies for you. If you go and tear down a few daras, one of the golden monstrosities is bound to show up. Top one even in one would go a long way to help in us take back our hunting grounds. Alright, will do, will do. Down the mountain we go. Oh, here we go. Hello, Saras. Okay. It, I thought, thought, thought I thought it maybe sounded dinosaur-like. Was well, indeed. Look at this. Very armored. We're capturing one of these things. Not kill, we have to capture. How much have we weakened it? I, I think maybe this is weak enough? Here we go. Magically contained. That's a fate. I was gonna say, that, lo that looks like a big one. To slay some of the Daras to the south here. Um, this one of this this is gonna reward us an ether current. How much more do we need here? The fringes. So we need three more from questioning and two from exploration. these things. Some 
good as sort of like a living stone construct. Slays Slay Highland. Whoops. There we go. Slay the Highland Daras and then defeat the Gold Dust Dara when it when it when it appears. We just slay until they until they pop up. Okay. Start backing our way here to the next one. So that we can continue to use the a couple more Bahamut blasts before the charge runs out. Sure the golden one doesn't appear now. Oh nope, there it is. <laughs> the big guy. Like no point in pulling another one if we uh if the, the one appears now. Alright then we Bahamut. Again, take it out. Here we go, boom shakalaka. We can, I was gonna say, maybe we'll explore a little bit of the south, but now we can explore the rest of this area when we unlock wine. Man, those Antillians burrow and they just like, shh, pincer you with their, with their freaking giant ass talon frontal mouth thing. Mandibles. Back up top we go. All right, here you go, last some giant ass dinosaurs in a bag for you. You're back. Do this bag contain what I think they do? Perhaps it is better not to ask how a ten tons dinosaur could fit into the sack. Magic. Wow, you really did it. Not that I didn't think you could, mind you. It's just been so long since anyone here has had the guts to contend with those beasts. You be sure we'll make good use of them. Their meat for rations is a given, but their horns and bones will make good tools, and their hides can make belts and boots. Did you know that Teloceras isn't even native to these lands? The Garleans use them for carrying frights, but the sods couldn't keep them uh, under control. A few of them escaped into the wilds, started breeding, and here we are. I guess you'd say it's a blessing in disguise. If they hadn't brought Teleroceruses here, we'd have one less source of meat and materials for fashioning our tools. Hecky, hecky, and then this last to the south. No need to explain. I saw the whole thing from here, you did? I guess you do have quite the sight lines out this way. You were every bit as amazing as I had hoped. A shame those things like to come back after a while. People say they're born from the spirits of warriors who've fallen in battle. Personally, I think it has something to do with the ether around here, but I've been praying for an end to the war all the same. Take care, friend. I'll be cheering for you. Thanks. Anything else to say, lass? The car lanes aren't the only thing we have to watch out for, you know. Why, some flying abomination could swoop down and snatch it up just like that treacherous lands apparently and this is I guess very open to the sky all right whoops okay surprisingly not a not a bunch of side quests that opened up there there'll probably be another wave later all right Alfie now I see we got Bard, Mechanist, Chess Piece. Ooh, very fancy, I like that. Then we've got Conjure. 
white mage, white mage color, uh, the healer one. Also looks very nice. Probably better than what we have. And then uh, the summoner one. We I think we just we just got the summoner robes from the dungeon. So let's see. This is two seventy nine, and what we have on is two seventy six. Okay, hold on. I think maybe we just... T we're eventually going to be leveling Barb Mechanist. I think we take that one. Honestly, because this would be slightly better than what we have, but don't really do... not doing much here on Scholar, and it's like only a couple of item level upgrades, and White Mage, we have the full um, Stormblood level 70 White Mage set, so we're good on that. Um, yeah, this is 282. We got this from the dungeon. Very fancy. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll, we'll just take the, uh, the Bard Mechanist one. That one looked nice as well. Alright. Alphano has heard this story too many times before. <laughs> story of primal summoning? Ahem. At the risk of sounding hopelessly naive, there may yet be a way to avoid a violent confrontation. You think? In the past, I fear I've been rather too willing to accept that we have no other recourse than to risk our lives. Or rather, your life, to address these threats. Oh, oh for no. In the past, I've just been like, it's all right, send in the warrior of light. You're going to try to avoid conflict? I don't, I don't think that'll be possible, though, dude. I don't think it'll be possible. I mean, there, uh, there's no way that I don't, can they de-summon it? Like, and even then, if they're tempered, I don't think they would agree to it. But the primals we have faced thus far have... There was only one time that we parlayed out of it. But we still had to fight, and that was against... Um... Ramu. And I guess, like... Technically, I think we could have parlayed our way out of, um... Shiva. But not at the time. But that was only because, like... She was, like, incarnated into Iseo. We tried to parlay with, um, Ravana. And we tried to parlay with, um... Um... The, the latest primal that we faced. The Lord of Revelry. Whose name escapes me right now, but yeah. Both of those ended up in a fight. <laughs> All right. The promises we face this far demonstrated a variety of temperaments and objectives. Oh, so they're saying we don't know this primal, and therefore they could be open to stuff. Ravana may delight in battle, but Ramu would sooner keep to the forest with his children. Yeah. But so far, it has only actually... Like, Ramu challenged us to a uh, trial of combat, and the Lord of Revelry dude also was just like, What for here? Yeah, I guess we shall fight then. You know, like, so... <laughs> But both could possibly have been talked with, and Ramu could have been quieted otherwise. And I mean, I te technically, if you count Alexander as a primal, Alexander sort of also, like, willingly shut itself down, sort of. Not really, sort of still forward actor, but, like, willingly took part in its own demise. But I'm not sure I entirely count Alexander as a primal. Like, it didn't, it just didn't feel primal-like. Whatever the fuck Alexander was as well. And we decide to challenge Sri, Sri Lax, Lakshma. Lakshmi? Sorry, Lakshmi. It would seem wise to learn more of her nature from those who summoned her into this world. Okay. If that is your will, then so be it. To the north you will find our village. Sarasha. Uh, Sarisha shall unfold all. Okay, so we're going to the Vera village. We shall leave at once. Monago, can you inform our comrades at the bridge of what happened? Scions, our, 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 our job of primal saying, slaying is nigh. Of course. Be safe, my friends. Alright, follow that snake lady. I'll see you later, Minago. I will send word to Conrad, Conrad and the others. Take care and do not hesitate to send for help if you need it. 
All right, we'll do. We're going to the north. Let me take a sip of water here while we're walking. current eat the current I think after this we'll just be missing uh, one more from exploration oh good thing I didn't take the main road or I would have maybe I would have maybe seen it going through the gate if I had looked up I probably would have seen it but I, I apparently took the not exactly straightforward route to the gate I was just like and eh, this is the right direction right all right here we go look at fancy ass gate you have here Welcome, Strata, to Vianilia. You are welcome here. Or, you are among friends here. Here we go. <laughs> like, I did not read that line right. Misha, hello. Welcome, adventurer. What brings you to Vianilia? Tell me about yourself. I am Nisha of the Vira, the great warrior tribe of the Ananta. We are born of Sri Lakshmi, La Lakshmi, the Lady of Bliss. She created us in her image, and in doing, in, in the doing, imparted us to us great gifts. We are blessed with her beauty, and so we have scales. We are blessed with her prolificacy, bearing many children, all of which are female. In like uh, asexual reproduction kind of way, or like. Uh how does that work? And we are blessed with her vitality as we age quite slowly. I think there is one species of like lizard that can do that. So they age slowly. They're long lived. Cool. Ananta are born from eggs. And as we shed our skin, our scales only grow more lustrous and brilliant. Is one of the secrets of our everlasting beauty. Eh. What kind of place is this? This is Viranilia, sanctuary of the Vera tribe. We cherish the freedom of our people, as does our great mother, Sri Lakshmi. It is why we fight for the resistance against the Imperials. Unfortunately, our sisters of Kalyana do not share this vision. They are obsessed with gemcraft and have grown content to ignore our plight in pursuit of preternatural beauty. What was once a temple in tribute to our mother is now a fortress. They covet as theirs and theirs alone. By our rights, it is we who should safeguard the temple. The Vera could easily take control of it, but our leader, Sarisha, insists we can resolve matters peacefully. I pray she is right. I see you. Oh, some, some Ananta actually sitting down, I see. Normally they're like standing on their tails, which is I don't know, kinda weird. They look they look kind of floaty. I think it would help if their tails were a little bit longer or they 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 like just like they they're like standing on the tip of their tails. It like invokes like kind of like the idea of like someone standing on the tips of their toes. They need like more s to be like more solid against the ground and have more length of their tail behind. A mender. What up, DLO? Is it not inconvenient to require a male to reproduce? What exactly do they? On second thought, perhaps I shouldn't ask. <laughs> Oh, we don't know how it is for you guys, man. I suppose they don't know how it is for us. Jayanti. It still amazes me how your striders maintain your posture on top of those stumps you call legs. I was surprised on how you maintain your posture on just the tip of your tail here. It's weird. Ah, I'm stuck. Okay, there we go. Anik, hello. 
I'll never understand why our kind needs fire to work metal when any number of magics can do so just as easily, if not more so. Ooh, they work metal with magics. Ooh. All right, then there's another gate out of the village. Okay. Let's keep going. Getting a hello. Make great, great efforts to preserve not only our own beauty, but that of our home. That is why we ask those who visit Viranila take care not to make a mess. Okay. Here's the leader, Sarisha. You guys don't have any, like, you guys are just like, nah, we'll just bask in the full light of the fucking sun. Are these, like, little houses? How do you guys get in there? What is it? Weird. Okay. Surrounded by, like, these treasures and pillows. Hello. We'd like to learn of your god that they've apparently, goddess that they've apparently summoned. We do not often receive guests. What is the purpose of your visit? Greetings and well met. We are the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, and we come seeking Sarisha of the Vera. You are she, are you not? You have positioned us for aid and succor, and we intend to provide them. But we will first learn uh, more of Sri Lakshmi, that we might better understand the nature of the threat she poses to you. A simple request, and one which I shall gladly oblige. In the beginning was Sri Lakshmi. We were created in her image, daughters blessed with her beauty. Her breath became ours, her serenity our solace. There is not she would not give. Hmm. Twas the Kalana Broodmother's desire to bring about her daughter's resurrection, which first called forth Sri Lakshmi from the ether. That being the case, I rather doubt the goddess will be spoiling for a fight. And depends. How would they be resurrected, for example? That would depend. The primal's motives will have been colored by the summoner's state of mind, namely that of a grieving mother who had borne witness to a daughter's murder. Yeah, I mean, look at Gabu, right? Titan was like, didn't care, he was just in a rage. Though she apparently craved a miracle, she may have also harbored thoughts of vengeance. Moreover, the, Kal the Kalyana's conception of Sri Lakshmi may differ from that of the Vera. That's right. That's right. Smart lady, Alice. This is true. The Vera and the Kal... This is true. The Vera and the Kalyana do indeed regard the Lady of Bliss in different ways. To the Vera, Sri Lakshmi embodies freedom. She would not suffer her daughters to be bound to another's will. And so we stand with the resistance against the Empire and give our lives to the cause. To the Kalyana, however, she embodies the transcendental beauty which they strive to create through their craft, to shape crystals and is less art and more ritual. A sacred duty wherein each tribe is imbued with a fragment of, s of the soul. Oh, each tribute is imbued with a fragment of the soul. The Imperials do not interfere with this holy work, and so the Kalyana were content to turn inward and ignore our plight. But eventually, if the Imperials knew you were doing the worshipping, like, they banned all religion for the Alamegans. Maybe they're just like, alright, we just don't care about these snake people. Until recent re reality asserted itself and they summoned a primal. A fevered dream to soothe their aching hearts. But surely they can see that it won't do any good. The Imperials will still rule these lands. Nothing will change. The Ananta will. The Kalyana bade the Vera make pilgrimage to pay proper respects, remember? Those who do not wish to partake of their primal's bliss will be made to do so. Not while we're around, they won't. Though, though our beliefs are not the same, we are still kin to the Kalyana. 
Will you help them to see reason? I mean, we can try. Oh, which of, okay, we get a dialogue option. You can count on us. Know that I'll kill your god if I have to. Maybe even if I don't. <laughs> uh, uh, damn. I think we go with the first line, but the second line is <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. Ah, I kill gods, man, even if I don't have to. I'm a god slayer. What can I say? I kill them. That's what I do. I can't control it. The god's lane is in my blood. <laughs> That's alright. You can count on us. We'll help you. <laughs> Maybe even if I don't. <laughs> That's a good line. That's a good line. But yeah, it's better we don't. If they're like... They probably understand that. Like, they've asked us to help kill her, so they probably understand that we have to, so... And they agree that it... They know, if they agree to help her slayer, that, that it's not their god, necessarily. And count on us. This punch. And we shall. For without you, we may be powerless to stop them. If we do not act quickly, more lives will be lost, more families torn apart, more children made to suffer. King of Gabu, Alice? Yeah. And it's settled. We're going to find the primal and put an end to this. Reeve detour from fighting the Empire to fight a primal. My sister, uh, Vajra, will guide you to Jan Kat, and I shall pray for your success. She's gonna guide us? All right, nod. Are you anything else to say, Sa Sa Sarisha? My sister, Vajra, will guide you to the Kalyanian Kali village. Do what you must, Icon Slayer. Mm. I think we're going to end there. I think we're going to end there, because this is probably going to be a primal fight soon, and I am pretty tired. <laughs> I'm pretty tired. We've been going for a bit. So we'll, uh, we'll end here, and then tomorrow... Um, it'll be taking on this primal and then continuing our fight to free Alamigo. Now that we've freed Doma, it's onward to free Alamigo. It's onward to free Alamigo. Yeah, so top of the day, probably primal fighting tomorrow. <laughs> probably primal fighting tomorrow, but yeah, that's gonna be it for me. That's gonna be it for me. So yeah, hope everybody has a good... Uh, day, night, whatever time zone. Be safe out there and take care of yourselves. Until next time for the Final Fantasy.